Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the roast chicken breast video of Cast Iron Eats. First of all, we're going to have to go and do a little bit of shopping at the local Oroku supermarket. So the supermarket is less than a month old and it gets mobbed every single day, like all the time. Gives you some kind of a measure how small a town that I live in, that the people are so excited by a new supermarket that that's the number one place in town to go to. Uh, nonetheless, it's very nice inside. It's a lot better than the old supermarket, which was pretty dire inside, to be honest. So um, today has been an absolutely beautiful day. So later on, I'm gonna drive you around to where I live. First of all, though, let's pick up some chicken. So this chicken is actually 20% off because it goes off goes out of date the next day so we'll get some of that's a little cheaper always good to save some money next we're gonna have to pick up some garlic powder not garlic salt next we're gonna have to get some coarse ground black pepper Alright, let's go for a little drive. So, I live out here in the countryside. I live in Niigata, Niigata Prefecture. So as you can see, surrounded by rice fields and not much else. It's a very nice place to live. I love living in Niigata. Uh, I'm actually from more or less the countryside where I'm originally from back in Scotland and I've lived in big cities before I um, they're just they're they're not for me I prefer living in the countryside it's cleaner it's safer you know you don't have to worry about things like cleanliness or safety when you live in Japan anyway but it's nice to have it's nice to have the peace and quiet when you like it
All right, so these are the two lodge skillets that I have. The one on the right is the 10 inch. That's the one there. And that's the 12 inch one. You can tell I've had the 12 inch one a bit longer because the seasoning is a lot better. The 10 inch one I got earlier this year and the, the seasoning on it is starting to build up, but it's, it's not so great. It still has that large pre-seasons feel and look to it, but it'll get there. All right, so first of all, I want to apologize for how this video was shot. It's, I, you know, it just completely slipped my mind to not film it in portrait. Never mind. Anyway, so what you want to do is fill up, uh, you know, a kitchen bowl with some warm water and, you know, your salt of choosing. Wrap it up, put it in the fridge and leave it there for about two hours to brine. Next, take the chicken out, give it a good wash off, make sure you get all the salt out, otherwise it will taste too salty. Don't worry about brining, it doesn't really affect the taste of the chicken as much as it does the texture. Brining for the two hours really, really improves the, the chicken's tenderness. Okay, give that a good shake. Pat it off some paper towels, pat it dry. Okay, now I'm really sorry, but it's difficult for you to see my oven here, the display. I don't mean all this stuff in Japanese. Anyway, uh, yeah, set your oven to 250 degrees. And what I like to do is while I'm preheating the oven, I like to put some olive oil in my skillet, put that in the oven while it's preheating so it warms the skillet up gradually. You don't want to shock cast iron with sudden heat, it can actually crack or warp. So we'll put that in there while the oven's warming up. Should probably take all the stuff off the top of the oven there, off the top of a hot oven. Derp. Okay, so first, or whichever really, season with your black pepper. Garlic powder and the paprika. The skillet should be nice and warm by now. Always use an oven glove. Do not touch hot cast iron with your bare hands. Okay, so once the skillet's out, turn the heat up, swoosh the oil around, get it hot enough until it starts smoking. And you just want to put that bird right in there. I hope the sizzling sound isn't too loud for the for the headphone users. My apologies. But isn't that a great sound? Season it again on the other side. With pepper, garlic, and the paprika. Please excuse my appalling camera work. A little shaky and not always looking at what it should be. Anyway, after about, let's say a minute, minute and a half, turn those chicken breasts over. The meat itself isn't actually burnt there, it's just the paprika. After another minute and a half, when it's seared on the other side, put it into the very hot oven. Now you want to time this for about, mm, I would check the meat after 12 minutes. Check the meat after 12 minutes because we're going to add something very special afterwards. Okay, next, give your surface a good spray with some alcohol, a little wipe with some paper towels. Okay, so let's check this chicken first time. Stick a needle thermometer in there. And I find that my chicken was, yep, 140. That's right. So definitely not done. At this time, let's add some maple syrup. Give it a 
great flavor. And the chicken will only be in there for another three or four minutes anyway, so the maple syrup won't get burnt. It might caramelize a little, but it won't burn. Back in with you. And do be sure to sterilize your needle thermometers as well. Don't pull the thermometer from the plastic bit, pull it from the base so you're holding on to the metal while you're pulling at the metal with the with the paper towel. I'm sure you know why. And no, I didn't just put that back onto a dirty surface. The needle wasn't actually touching the surface oh, to begin with. Anyway, so there we go, 168. Above 165 Fahrenheit is your ideal temperature for your chicken to be done. Okay, so let's plate that up. I do like my little Moomin Valley plates. Drizzle that with the chicken juice. Do not let it go to waste. Forget about that maple syrup. Okay, so get your water very hot. So that's 60 degrees right there, 60 degrees Celsius. I just went from Fahrenheit to Celsius, please. Excuse me. So yes, as I said before, don't shock the cast iron. If it's just come out of the oven, let it sit for a few minutes before you put the very hot water onto it. So give it a good rinse. Rinse it good a couple of times. Then you want to take the soft side of a regular dish sponge. Don't feel shy about taking some of the crap off with your fingernails. Give it a good wipe. You can use soap on your cast iron pans, but I wouldn't recommend it. It takes away the seasoning coat that you're trying to build up. And it might make your food taste funny. It might make it taste like soap. That a good rinse off. Don't be like me and put your hands in very hot water. It hurts. Give it a good wipe all over. Make sure there's no rubbish on it. Yeah, it looks clean enough to me. Okay, let's get it on the burner. I'm going to dry it off and get it nice and hot for the next coat of seasoning we'll be putting on it. You want to do this every time that you use your cast iron skillets. And of course the high heat sterilizes the pans as well. Oh, look at that chicken. You want to let that chicken sit for 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes, before you cut into it. It's not properly clean! Let's start again. Alright, so let's start with your hot skillet. Add in about a tablespoon of canola oil, vegetable oil. Take you a little bit of paper towel, 
and give that a good wipe inside. Make sure you get in the sides. Around the sides and top. Make sure that the paper towel hasn't been shredded to bits by the metal. You don't want to leave any kind of any kind of trace of paper towel in there. Needs a little bit more oil this one. Got on the underside of the skillet. This is all a preventative measure to keep your skillet from rusting. Applying the coat of seasoning every time stops your skillet from rusting. And if you live in a humid country like I do, in Japan, this is essential. So put the skillet back into the hot oven, upside down, and let everything cool down together. And then your seasoning should set. Okay, so 10 minutes have been up. It's time to cut open the chicken. Okay, now what should happen since we've let the meat rest for 10 minutes or more? All the juiciness should stay in there. Shouldn't all run out onto the chopping boards. And that is how you make juicy chicken breast. First you brine it for two hours. Then you sear it on either sides. Then when you take it out of the oven, you let it sit for more than 10 minutes and it should retain its juiciness. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.